Stall of Dragons, Season 2, Episode 10, The Six Winds. El Aviv could smell the battlefield smoke from over two decades ago. The scorched grass, wood, and peat held a smell that hung in the air and clung to her memories. They were all poised on the ridge astride six war horses overlooking a huge barbarian army in the green valley below. Their shouts and jeers are muffled at this distance by the gentle breeze. It was spring, she remembers. This was her tribe, her family, all wearing armor or tunics emblazed with the same sword and crown, the symbol of the Knights of the Glen. Elvie. She looks at her leather tunic and the bow in her hand. I was a scout archer. You were one of the best. She saw the jade bracelet on her left mm. hand. You called me Jade because of my bracelet. Kildor nodded. Yes. She closed her eyes and in her memory looked next to her at the young man in shining silver armor gilded with gold. A deep blue emblem on his chest matching his eyes. Your paladin, our beacon of faith. Yes, uh, I, I was. <laughs> what? You were clean shaven back then. <laughs> Yes, I, I was that too, he said smiling, stroking his bearded chin. There's a village in flames behind the raiders, her keen nose filling with the iron and smoke of the slaughter below. Why have you done this? She notices the raven-haired mage at her right turn away as she sees a few knights' bodies are being paraded around by the barbarians. They're celebrating that slaughter, the slaughter that they all came to atone for. She is wearing white robes, embroidered with flames at the cuff, and a red and orange crown and sword wreathed in flames on her chest. She was an evoker, a fire mage. Yes. Can you remember her name? She opened her eyes and looked back at the camp, at Cordelia. She looked so much like her. A smile crept across her face. Laura. Laura Hanna Shieldheart. Keldor smiled next to her holding her hand in his. They were sitting next to the stream by themselves. Everyone else was giving them time to reunite. Keldor helping her with her memories before they all tried sharing stories to jog her memory. Yes. He nodded. She wasn't a shield heart yet, but she might as well have been. Do you see our brother next to her? I remember. He, he had a mustache. Can you tell me his name? She closed her eyes to focus. On the other side of Lorahana was a strong man. His blonde hair hung to the shoulder, and a long mustache was beginning to form on his upper lips, swooping down from the corners of his mouth to his chin. His armor was intricately carved and stamped with symbols of the order. He was a decorated warrior for being so young. He drew his long sword at his side. They will pay this day, I swear it. His unmistakable booming voice rang out from his huge chest. Erebus. Erebus Shieldheart. Yes. My, my memory is hazy. I can't seem to remember the others. No, no, I'm sure you can. Close your eyes, Elaviv. Hear them. Hear them and remember. Is it just us, then? A knight states plainly, turning her head to the black-haired leader. Her dirty blonde hair hung gently to the shoulder, cut in a short style to ensure mobility in the heavy plate of her torso, a style all but Jade and Lorahana were wearing. The knight carried a polearm with a swooping blade at the end. It was a glaive. Elaviv remembered. A glaive of the winds. Her name was... Ilona. Ilona, you are correct. The black-haired man at the front surveyed the battleground carefully. Lucilius. Lucilius was his name. Lucilius turns to Ilona to answer, the venom in his voice barely hidden behind his stoic stance. Yes, 
Vimeo refuses to acknowledge the threat to our people. It is now up to us. She responds. The leather of her gloves creaked as she gripped her glaive tightly with a smile. Well, good. I like it that way. Hmm. As do I, my sister. The raven-haired mage touches the tattoo of a sword on her arm. A blade of pure orange flame leaping to her hand. Mm, I agree. Less bureaucracy to deal with. Keldor, what do you say, old friend? Truly the Night Lord is with us this day. I will be dancing. May we ride like the wind. Lucilia smiles before gripping the reins tightly in his left hand, drawing a longsword with his right. Holding it aloft, he cries, We shall do glory! As one force, the six winds rode not only into battle, but into songs and legends. They liberated that town and led the army to push back the bandits from the nation of Troll, away from the former stronghold of Garnet Keep. I remembered. Elviv threw her arms around Keldor, who squeezed her tight in his arms. Happy, she remembered herself, though hesitant and worried about her remembering too much. Would he be ready to walk that path with her again? He groaned slightly, standing from sitting on the log for so long, the blood rushing to his armored legs and feet. His armor was blackened with soot and dirt, she thought. Nothing like her memory of him and the gleaming shine back then. Yes. Yes, you did, sweet Elviv. <sighs> Come. Let's join the group. I'm sure they have tails to spin as well. He smelled the air. Mm. Not to mention, I'm getting a little bit hungry. <laughs> <laughs> he said smiling, leading her back to the savory smell of the venison. Carrots, parsnips, and potatoes. Slow cooking in the iron pot on the fire. <laughs> Zorn was taking his turn talking about growing up in Port Lafour. Elaviv laughing as she remembered their good times. So then she throws the spoon at me, knocking over the glass vase she was telling me to stay away from. <laughs> Pretty sat next to Elaviv, arms wrapped around her long lost friend. <laughs> Oh, wait. I remember being on the roof, surrounded by fire. Sophie tensed up, remembering the escape from Port Lafour. I remember you all escaped. I was so relieved. They all nodded, and Benedict rose to put a hand of comfort on her shoulder when he saw a familiar glint of metal around Erlen's neck. He stopped and stared wide-eyed. What? What? It was a dragon turtle. The same exact design as the one adorning the sword of Lord Pallas. Only this one had icy blue eyes. Where did you get that? This I've had as long as I can remember. Why? Erlen clutched it as he coolly responded. <sighs> Keldor rose. What is it, Benedict? This is an interesting design. He gestured for permission it? to examine it further. Erlen stood his huge seven-foot frame dwarfing the, even the tall Keldor. Keldor passed it over in his hand. Mithril silver. And impressive. He turned it and saw the forge mark. It was a reversed E and S entwined. His eyes grew wide. That's my father's mark. Wait, your father had a mark like this. T tell me, and tell me true. Was his mark like this only reversed as if in a mirror. Yes. Well, now you mention it. It, it was reversed. Why? Keldor froze. My. His brow furrowed, his gentle eyes welling with tears. <laughs> he fell to his knees in racking sobs. I... I should have known you. Twenty years of torment hitting him all at once. He wiped a hand across his eyes quickly. Elaviv. Keldor rose and turned his back to Benedict, staring at Elaviv. Do you remember that night? For his expert leadership over the next month's campaign, Lucilius was named the Lord Protector of Garnet Keep. 
They soon settled behind the ancient granite walls, all six of us together continuing to work in harmony with each other. While Lucilius governed wisely and justly from the meeting halls, Ilona the Fair helped to build the gardens and tend to the great tree in the center courtyard. Erebus set up a blacksmith shop with his now wife, Laura Hanna, who was a wonderful streamstress. This was his mark. Elevi, you were teaching the people how to hunt the forests and fish the lake behind the keep. And the lake had that grand waterfall before cascading into the ravine. And I, I taught the word of the Night Lord and his righteous justice from the chapel. Soon Lucilius and Ilona married and had a first boy. Thanks. He was blonde, a thrill seeker, rather reckless as I remember, like his mother. A few years went by and Elaviv and I became fond of each other as well. But my vows would never allow me to love or take a wife. But I tell you, I tell you all, I loved her. Lucilius and Ilona had another son, dark-haired like his father, quiet, reserved, and never cried, really. Shortly thereafter, Laura Hanna gave Erebus the light of his life, a daughter. I became jealous, angry. I, I was cursed with this feeling in my soul. It was a longing like none I had felt before or since. One night I left my post and went to the stables to ponder and pray. I prayed for guidance or deliverance, but I soon cursed myself and all those around me. When I challenged the law of my order, saying these feelings were natural, I shouldn't have to run from them. Why, why couldn't we be happy too? That night, bandits raided the keep, sneaking in past my abandoned post. Humans and orcs set fire to the gardens. Screams rang out in the night. People terrified ran from the keep that no longer protected them. The walls were ablaze. I saw Lona fighting them with her great glaive spinning. Where was everyone else? I don't know. How. But she leaped through the flames and then into a building's fire, disappearing in the blaze. Lucilius was on the ground, clutching his side, a mortal wound's blood pouring between his fingers as he looked at me. Keldor, my old friend. I, I have failed you, my lord. I... Shh. No, no. Not now, dear friend. Whatever you did, I forgive you. Now, it's my turn to tell you, May the Night, and the Maiden, watch you. Lord Lucilius Don't Don't leave me Please <laughs> I lost everything in that moment My lord, my faith And my mind I drew my sword And dove into the battle with a vengeance I cut everything down that I could find that wasn't one of our people. Their cries fueled my hatred and anger as one by one they fell. After what seemed an eternity, we were finally overrun. And even in my mad state, it was time to flee. I lost my Elevive, my friends, and my home. I mounted my horse's back and rode into the night down the high stone bridge over the ravine, past the waterfall, and down the rocky mountain path, and never to return to Garnet Keep again. My shame knew no bounds. I abandoned the knighthood, I abandoned my faith, abandoned any search to find 
those that may have survived, assuming all were lost. And I spent the last 20 years as a mercenary and sword for hire. <sighs> Until now. What? Keldor stood in front of a stunned Benedict. Drawing his great sword, he kneeled to him. I pledge to you, Benedict, son of Lucilius and steward of Garnet Keep. You will regain your birthright. Epilogue. His black and red boots echoed as he ascended the cold black stone steps. His hands unconsciously flexed, his forearms pulsing under the strain. He pulled his bright orange hair back from his dark face, red eyes glowing like embers. You called me. He almost spat it out. He was no servant. Yes! Make the troops ready. We begin our march tomorrow. In two weeks' time, we should reach the Celestine Tower in the center of the Great Glen Valley. Lord Pallas stood up, clasping his hand around the dragon turtle pommel of his great sword, its red eyes twinkling. Yes, I will do as you wish. He turned to walk away. One more thing, Pallas sneered. The blue dragons will lead the first sorties. He took some delight in seeing the look of disappointment on his servant's face. Fine. We will be victorious, won't we, Fury? Fury growled deeply as he turned on his heel to descend the stairs. The dragon's blood in his veins pulsing with rage. Ilona the Fair, played by Leslie Beckman. Erebus Shieldheart is played by Jesse Phillips. Laura Hanna Shieldheart is played by Laura Jurdak. Lucilius, played by Benjamin Corley. El Aviv Hawklight is played by Jessica Atchley. Fury the Dragon, played by Barrett Giant. Lord Pallas is played by Ian Wilkinson. Benedict Shieldheart, played by Brian Dowling. Zorin, played by Cody Miller. Erilyn, voiced by Jordan Thompson. And I am Mike Ashley, the voice of your narrator, Keldor Ironfist. This season was supported by our patrons, Hilly Munoz, Corey Fouch, Daniel Nichols, and Brave Adventurers, Paper Miniatures. The majority of the music for this program is composed by myself, but please take notice of the piece currently playing. It was written and performed by Daniel Nichols of the Happy Go Lucky podcast and is a musical interpretation of our first two seasons. What an amazing contribution. We will return to continue the story November 1st, 2020. In the meantime, stay safe, dear friends, and remember the oath.